56ers, all month we've been talking about emotions. Emotions. And I don't know if you can guess what we're going to talk about today. Any guesses? Mm. Well, there's a little song that goes something like this. <laughs> row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. That wasn't quite what I was going oh. for. Uh, <laughs> some of you might know the song as I've got the... Oh, I know some of you said it. You said joy. That's joy. Right. That's what we're, we're talking, talking about, about today. Joy. And I personally really like Joy because Joy is my middle name, yes. But the question really when it comes to Joy is what is the difference between Joy and happiness? Because there's lots of things that make us happy. Oh yeah. The other day I got to snuggle some little baby kitties. Oh, and I could just put them up against my face and they're just so cute and it just made me so happy. And you know, one of the things that brings me Joy is ice cream. Oh my goodness. Moose Tracks ice cream. It's got peanut butter cups in it. Ooh, I can, I can just eat ice cream all the time. It brings me a ton of happiness. You said, you said joy. joy. Yeah. But they're different. You're so, right. So, oh, so tell us, Pastor Jordan, what's the difference between happiness and joy? Yeah, you see, the big difference between happiness and joy is happiness are moments that occur. They come like this. Boom, boom, boom. And they can come and go. But we can turn happiness into joy when we're thankful. Hmm. Because... Joy is a gift from God. And when you recognize a gift and you receive a gift, you say thank you. And that's what takes happiness, just this light little snuggling a kitty emotion, and turns it into recognizing that God has given us amazing gifts. And that joy goes down, down in our hearts, just like the song. And then the other thing about joy is it doesn't just come with happiness. It actually, when we're sad or when we're feeling other things, we can turn things into joy by being thankful to God. And today we're going to look at a, a story in the Bible that someone was happy and they turned their happiness into joy by being thankful. And, and they actually danced. And so in order to um, kind of get you thinking, we're going to play a little game real quick. And how this game is going to work is I, the great dancer that I am, the one with such great rhythm and gracefulness and finesse. I'm going to do some dances for you across the screen and if you can guess what the dance is, you get a point. Now, first person in your family, if you're playing together, to get the most points is gonna win. And what do you win? Well, this is what we're gonna do. If you're playing with your family or playing with others, if you get the most points, your family has to come up with a cheer in your honor Ooh. at the end of this game. I don't like coming up with and, cheers. And the, well, and, and the cheers got to be good. So no lame cheers, all right? You got to be a cheer. And you just have to cheer for them. Or you have to wait on them for lunch today. That'll be the other thing. Wait on them, hand and foot. Make it happen. Okay. Check out the dances. Check out these dances. Mm. <laughs> all right. Dance number one. Oh, my goodness. I just pulled my groin out. <laughs> what was that one? What do you think that was? That was pretty graceful. Check me out. This is the final dance. <laughs> Well, now that I've embarrassed myself on national television. This is, this is national television? It's, it's gone viral. I had no we idea. We have a killer amount of views. Oh my yep. goodness. You're one of our millions of fans. I'm just joking. This is only Red Deer. But, as you can see, I have no rhythm, I have no grace, but I can still have some joy. There's a lot of joy there. I think, I think we can all admit that Pastor Jordan brought us a little bit of joy just watching it. Yes. So here's, here's the answers. Number one, you probably guessed, Pastor Jordan was trying to do the limbo. What was number two? Number two was... Ballet. 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 Yes. Number three 
was a little bit of break dancing. Oh, there. that was that was probably little, the worst. Little break dancing <laughs> attempt. Number four, probably everyone got this one, the Macarena. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. What was number I five? What was number five? Do you remember what it was? Uh, I think number five was like some. Uh... It was supposed to be the tango. But we would also accept like flamenco dancing or pretty much any kind of ballroom thing because it wasn't it wasn't it, super it was, clear. It wasn't very good. But you know what? It brought us joy. And so if that's you great. if you won, you make sure that family does a ridiculous cheer or dance for you, or you could pick for option two. Ask them to wait on you for the next meal. Whatever you want, they have to get it. You stay seated. They make it happen. I got I got all five. Does that mean you have to wait mm, on me? No, because my yeah. dancing was. Mm. Okay, now that we've been a little bit silly, we actually want to read our story. And the reason Pastor Jordan was dancing is because in the story we read, that's actually the way that David expresses his joy and thankfulness to the Lord. Now, dancing might not be your cup of tea. It isn't exactly mine. But all of us need to find ways of expressing our joy back to the Lord. So when we read this passage together, I want you to be thinking about how joy bubbles out in your life in thankfulness. So we're in 2 Samuel chapter 6, starting at verse 12. Before I read this, the Israelites have actually been having a similar experience to what is happening for us right now. See, the Ark of the Lord was kind of where the Israelites would go to to experience God's presence. Kind of, a little bit like how we gather together in church to kind of worship together and say thank you to God. It's been a little bit like that for the Israelites because the Ark has been somewhere else. And at this moment, we pick up here where all of a sudden, the Israelites are going to be allowed to bring the ark back into the city and experience God's presence. And they're pretty excited. Let's read together. Now King David was told, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. Obed-Edom is the guy who was keeping the ark. So David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. Okay, we got to pause here and translate this into 2020 kind of language. Every six steps, David was pausing and pouring out gratitude by sacrificing one of his cows to the Lord. That doesn't make any sense to us because most of us don't have cows. Maybe there's a few of you out there who do, but I can't imagine when you're happy, you go and kill a cow. But this was a way that the Israelites would choose to express their joy and thankfulness. They would give a sacrifice. Now David, he's also a bit of a dancer and he likes using his body to express publicly his joy. Here's what happens though. While he and all of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with all shouts and the sound of trumpets, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. It's really interesting because she's a little bit embarrassed of King David at his lavish expression of joy. And as the story goes on, we see that there's actually a punishment for Michael, David's wife, because she doesn't choose to care about expressing joy and gratitude to God. Instead, she turns up her nose at it. See, when God impacts our hearts, when something, when something has happened, we, we want to take that happiness and say thank you to God in, in, in whatever way works for us. And really, that's kind of what we talk about when we talk about worship. Worship is taking our experiences back to God in praise and thankfulness. And we want you to watch this little clip that helps explain what we actually mean when we say the word worship. Let's talk about the science of worship. I'm gonna try to explain this in the simplest way possible. So scholars and researchers have done tons of study on the brain during worship, like what happens in our minds when we worship and sing to God. When we listen to music, any music, not just worship music, a lot of our brain is really active, especially the areas that process sound. But also, your brain is active in your left temporal lobe. That's where language happens. 
and in the right hemisphere, that's where creativity happens, and in your corpus callosum, that's the channel of neuropathways between both hemispheres of your brain. See, there's one level of neuroactivity associated with just listening to music, but there's a whole nother level of activity that happens when it comes to actively participating in or creating together, as we do when we're singing. When you look at what happens in a room full of Christians singing praise music, it's incredibly participatory compared to just being at a concert or listening in your car. Everyone who is singing along is contributing to the environment of the room. And that, that whole, we're all in this together, it amplifies the effects that music has on our thoughts and our awareness. And this comes with lots of benefits. First, an increased capacity to process language. Second, a positive state of mind. Third, a higher sense of self-worth and self-esteem. When we worship together, a room full of brains start to create these neurological patterns that are similar to each other. We see this in a brain scan. As people start to contemplate everything that's happening, the lyrics, the singing, the environment of the room, you start to rise and transcend your focus beyond yourself. You go from thinking about yourself and your needs, to your family, to your community, to your city, to your part of the world, to all of humanity, and then ultimately to God. You see, worship steps you into these broader views of reality. This transcendent state is amplified by the music and by everyone doing it together. And because of our social identities, because of the power of music, because of the participation that's happening, it creates such an elevated experience. It gives a greater chance for other people to join in and to experience God. So yeah, worship is not just about singing. Worship actually helps us say, it's not about me. Worship unifies us with God and others. That video reminds me that when we say thank you to God, when we worship, joy fills my heart. It isn't just singing, it's, it's the fact that we're taking our attention off ourselves and putting it in its right place on God and saying thank you, and that produces joy. And the deal is, if we want joy to keep coming in our lives, if we want joy to keep sustaining, we need to be people that say thank you to God. Thank you through singing, but also just thank you in our hearts throughout the day, thanking God for all the things, and joy will continue to be a part of our lives. The second thing that I noticed from that passage of scripture is David, not only does he say thank you to God, not only does his joy cause him to do that, but his joy causes him to bless other people. You see, when we are full of joy, our second response besides gratitude should be to care about other people, to bless other people, to do stuff for other people. And I know many of you, you don't have a ton of money. You don't have a lot of resources. But if you have joy, it will cause you to do things for other people. I want you to pause the video right now. And I want you to go get a pen and paper. Because we got some things we're going to write down and think about for our Lectio today. So go do it. Okay, I'm going to read a little piece of scripture uh, for you. And we're going to think on it and dwell on it. And as I read, I want you to be thinking about where are the things in your life that you can be thankful for? Where do you need to have joy? All right, let me pray for us before we read. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we ask as we read the scripture that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm just going to read this a few times. I encourage you just to listen and Think about maybe what God might be trying to say to you. This is Philippians 4, 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Listen again. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, present your request to God. And the peace of Christ, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As I read it a third time, pay attention to the words that stick out to you. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of Christ which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Did you notice? Did you notice the call to rejoice, the call to be thankful? As you think about that passage, what is a word that stood out in your mind? What is one thing you thought of Take a little bit of time to share it with someone today, how God's trying to speak to you. The other thing I'd love for you to do, with your family or with whoever you're watching this video, I want you to take your pen and paper and write down what, it, what stood out to you, but then write down where can you be grateful for today? How can you turn little happy moments, little moments into joy by being grateful? And second piece that I'd take some time to, if you are full of joy, how can you use that joy by blessing other people? Who's someone in your family that you could bless today? All right. Thanks a lot, 56ers. Hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next week.